Good morning, class. Good morning. Today I am going to be speaking to you about the Puritan poet Anne Bradstreet. Anne Bradstreet was born in 1612, about 20 years after Winthrop. But she was from the same era and family background as John Winthrop, and in fact, it's interesting to note that she sailed on the Arbella from England to New England with John Winthrop, who was the captain and the governor for the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Winthrop, uh, excuse me, Anne Bradstreet's father, the deputy governor Dudley, was also a future governor of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. And her husband, Simon Bradstreet, was also a significant Puritan Protestant leader. I use the word Protestant now so that you understand that the Puritans, in their purifying of the Church of England or the Catholic Church, were protesting the Catholic Church. And the Puritans' legacy today is the Protestant religion. So the two are, in fact, synonymous. Puritans were Protestants. So, Anne Bradstreet grew up in Lincoln, England, which was the second largest town in England at the time. She received a superior education and married a graduate of Cambridge University when she was 16. So her husband, as I mentioned, was a man by the name of Simon Bradstreet who went to Cambridge after Winthrop. But they were all part of the same socioeconomic class and background. Bradstreet's husband was appointed to help set up the Massachusetts Bay Colony with Winthrop. And they all sailed together on the Arbella. Anne Bradstreet had eight children with Simon and was a devoted wife and mother. She was a loyal Puritan and her poetry reflects the concerns she had for her husband and her children in the new world, which was rife with hardship whether that hardship came in the form of the weather, confrontations with the Native Americans, the need for establishing houses, or the search and procurement of food. The Puritans could only ship so many supplies with them, so the circumstances upon arrival were often very difficult. Bradstreet was a very ambitious poet, and she wrote every day. She was a well-read young woman and very intellectual because her father supported her in her intellectual pursuits. She was reportedly her father's favorite child, and he spent many hours with her when she was young, reading and discussing the Bible. Most of the poems included in Bradstreet's first book, The Tenth Muse, which her brother sent to England for publication in 1650, were actually quite conventional in style and form and dealt with history and politics. In some poems, she wrote about the uprisings of Puritans in England, and in others, she wrote about the accomplishments of the first Queen Elizabeth. The publishing success of this first book gave her confidence. Even though she refers to the publication 
and to her displeasure at having it published without her knowledge in one of her most famous poems, the author to her book. You should all be sure to read Anne Bradstreet's poem, The Author to Her Book, which is a metaphoric discourse on Bradstreet writing about her book of poetry as a child of horrors, and she refers to it as her offspring, but she is in fact referring to her book of poetry. In many ways, Anne Bradstreet was a very typical Puritan woman, and many of her poems reflect the struggles that she, along with her peers, confronted on a daily basis in the New World. She was often contrast the many earthly losses that she suffered, whether it was the premature death of a child or the absence of her husband or the difficulty in obtaining food, with her eternal rewards of finding and believing in God. There is a tension, a frequent tension in her poetry between the earthly sufferings and the spiritual rewards of her faith. In many of her poems, she writes, for example, about, well, in one of her poems, she writes about an incident where the family house was burnt down. In another, she writes about the fear of the death of one of her children. Another famous poem of hers is called Before the Birth of One of Her Children. This one begins with the line, All things within this fading world hath end. And I would like you all to read this poem as it is a very honest meditation on her sadness about the knowledge that life will end for her at some point and for each of her children. It is a bittersweet poem. In other poetry, she writes directly about the relationship that she had with her husband. It was a loving and long marriage. And she openly discusses feelings of love and desire, which was rather original in its day. Bradstreet also wrote about the roles for Puritan men and women, and generally sought to improve the lot for Puritan women. While she accepts her role and the adversity, adversity facing her as a woman in the new world, she seems to hope for the eternity in the afterlife. So her poems include both concerns for her family and her children, but also the pleasure that she took in her everyday life. On occasion, she seeks the respite that she will hope to find in the afterlife. Bradstreet has gone down in history as the first major American woman poet. And I ask that you read her poems carefully so that later in the course you may compare them with our another very famous American female poet by the name of Emily Dickinson who followed her 200 years later. I will also ask that you contemplate writing your own poems in the style and tone of Bradstreet. I ask that you write about your own family concerns and perhaps a poem to one of your parents or siblings. 
Enjoy the process of being a poet.